Hello and today I want to talk about how to set up a Windows 10 virtual machine on your QNAP NAS. So I'm going to talk you through a few different things today but predominantly at the end of this video you will know how to have a copy of Windows 10 up and running on your QNAP NAS. There's a few caveats here or there and I'll try and cover them as much as I can. I've also got quite the most amazing sore throat right now so I apologize if I seem a bit eh at times. So carry on. So the first thing we're going to need is of course a copy of Windows. You can't just get Windows 10 out of thin air and there's several ways to do it. If you are utilizing like me right now a Windows 10 based PC you can create a virtual copy of your machine which will then turn your physical machine into a virtual one that lives on your NAS. In order to do this you will need to download some tools. Uh, I would recommend one of two. I would recommend either utilizing VMware vCenter, a completely free application, really easy to install. You don't even need to sign up for it. And from here, once you've got it installed, go to con Convert Machine, then select this local machine. And then from these options here, all the way through, you can select the drives on your machine and then create a virtual copy of it. Just remember, you will need to do this onto an external drive or onto a NAS over the network as you can't save a virtual image of a PC onto the PC. That is some mind-bending inception type stuff. You have to make sure you save it off of your system. Another way to do it that's a little less impactful on the way you use your system is using another app called Disk2VHD, another completely free one. Bit of an older tool this one, but this allows you to create a virtual hard disk of the hard disk or SSD that is your physical PC right now and then once again save it onto a network drive or onto a USB or Thunderbolt connected drive and then transfer that over to the NAS. But this one as low as its impact is on your system so you can use your PC while you're um, um, you know, backing up and creating a virtual copy, it takes so much longer. A 500 gig, even SSD based system like this will take about 14 to 18 hours to complete. And if you sever connection with a USB or NAS drive, the whole thing will corrupt. So bear in mind that disk to VHD utilizes less system resources, but takes longer, or you can use VMware vCenter, which is a bit quicker, but will pretty much put your PC out of action while it's creating the virtual machine so bear that in mind once you've created those virtual machines it's worth highlighting that it isn't the only way to put windows 10 on your nas you can do a completely fresh install of windows 10 and um, to do that what you need to do is go to windows 10 evaluation section or just go to this url up here and it will give you the option to download windows 10. now it's worth highlighting when, in, when you want to get a copy of Windows 10, if you're on a Windows 10 PC like I am right now, you're not going to see the option to just download Windows 10. You can only download um, the toolkit, you can download the USB upgrade kit, but not actually Windows 10. Luckily, there's a way around it. Now, if you're using an Android Chromebook or a mobile or a Mac system or a Linux system, you're going to see right here the button to download Windows 10. But if you're on a Windows PC and you're using Chrome, Head up to the three dots, go to More Tools, and then select Developer Tools. From here, go back up to these three dots, and then from there, go to More Tools, and then go to Network Conditions. Then from here, scroll to the bottom where it says User Agent. Click Select Automatically, and then from here, you can change the system that you're using to access, that the, your system will be classed as. So, for example, you can say, I want my system to be viewed as if it was an iPad. And then what will happen now is if we refresh this page, it will then show you what this page would look like to someone using an iPad, not a PC, a Windows PC. And there you go. You can now download Windows 10 automatically rather than just get an update file. And that's what you need. Once you've downloaded this file, upload it onto the NAS and then we can access it later. So there you go, those are the two main ways to have a Windows 10 VM and the ISO, either creating a clone of your existing desktop PC or utilizing a brand new copy of it. 
The next thing to bear in mind is system resources. You're going to need to make sure you're using a NAS powerful enough to support a Windows VM and still function. So you need to use a NAS that's at least got a four core, a 64 bit x86 based processor. So I'm talking like some of the more graphical AMD Radeon based uh, CPUs, an Intel Celeron, an Intel Pentium, an Intel Core i3, i5, i7, or a Xeon. These processors will give you enough oomph to run the NAS and the VM at once. Alongside that, you need memory. You'll need at least four gig and eight gig ideally of memory to run a VM to make sure you've got enough memory to run the NAS and enough memory to dedicate to the virtual machine. The final thing you'll need is a tool called Virtualization Station. It's available in the QNAP App Center and there are lots of apps to choose from, but a virtualiz a Virtualization Station 3 is completely free and easy to download. Once you've done that, you can run the app and it looks a little like this. Now, from here, there are different ways to run a Windows 10 VM. If you created a virtual image, you can use the Create VM. If you used Hyper-V or um, uh, Disk to VHD, you can import the VM or convert the VM into an ISO. Or they've recently added the ability to try free Windows VMs to Virtualization Station, but you do need a strong internet connection in order to do it, and I've disconnected it for this video so there's no pop-ups. But from here, you can download a copy of a virtual machine to your NAS and immediately deploy it. But this will be a freeware VM and you don't get a great deal of choice. So as good as it is, if you want a particular VM, maybe an XP VM or a 7 or Windows 8.1, because you've got certain software to run that's not usable on your existing system, I recommend using a, a particular ISO that you choose, like the one I've downloaded. So from here, I'd click Create VM. I first name the VM. I'm going to call this Windows 10. I'm going to say it's a Windows environment, but you can select different operational environments if you want to install Android, Ubuntu, or other VMs. And then from there, it can tailor it a lot easier in terms of drivers if you say what kind of VM you want to run. In my case, Windows 10. But bear in mind that this doesn't necessarily dictate how the VM will run, and maybe you're using a version of Windows that's not on this list. Next, say how many of the CPU's cores you want to dedicate to this VM. Always make sure you leave at least one or two cores spare for the running of the NAS in the background, so you can use all the traditional NAS functions from QNAP, but still run the VM. I'm going to use two cores, and in terms of memory, I'm going to use 2 gig of the 4 gig included with this system. Therefore, I've got 2 gig for the VM and 2 gig for the running of the NAS. Next, where it says CD image, click browse and find the VM ISO that we downloaded earlier and uploaded to the NAS. I've got lots of VMs and games here that I'm going to be using in the videos in the next month. For now, we're going to head down and use the Windows 10 VM and then click OK. Next, you have to say where your data is going to live. From here, it means that all the files that you're going to be storing for the VM and its operation, just like you would a traditional hard drive, are going to live in this location. Either select a brand new folder or use an existing one. For now, I use this folder here for my VMs, as you can see. Then click OK. Now say how much storage you want to dedicate to this Windows 10 virtual machine. This will be taken from the total available storage on the NAS. As you can see, I've got a two 14 TB drives in a RAID 1 environment, so I've got quite a lot of storage to play with. I'm only going to dedicate 250 gig to this VM, but you can, of course, add more. You can even change a number of these options even after the VM is created. Next, creating a virtual switch on the NAS will be something Virtualization Station will do by default when setting up the device for the first time. It allows for the virtual machine you create to interact with your physical network, that's the LAN connections that connect all of your devices and the internet to your network, and this is an option that's set up by default, but you can create more virtual switches for more VM networks later on, but that's a bit complex for this video. Lastly, for the VNC Outlook, 
and this is where you access the VM remotely, you can set an additional password on top of your normal NAS credentials. I'm gonna leave that blank for now, but as you see when you click OK, it will recommend that you do that for security. For now though, I'm gonna go ahead and create this VM using the settings that I've selected. So now we will ask if you want to use the auto install utility to automate the installation procedure. This means that Windows 10 will be automatically unloaded and unpacked and installed without you having to intervene. It does make a Windows 10 installation fantastically straightforward, but I know a number of you may want to have more bespoke Windows 10 setups. So for you, I'm going to click um, um, cancel and I want to uh, go for a standard setup. But for you guys that want to make a quick, easy and fast Windows 10 setup, click OK. And there you see it. The Windows Virtual Machine is ready to go with our Windows 10 Boot CD in the virtual disk form in the virtual disk drive. Before we boot the VM, we can see at the bottom here lots of options. We can change the CD or DVD in the virtual tray or add more disks. We can assign physical USB ports on the NAS to the VM. We can take snapshots, which are kind of like save spots of the VM that we can revert to later. Just remember you have to keep the entire list of snapshots in order to be able to browse through them. We can clone the VM and create multiple VMs if we have the hardware resources. Therefore, we can test, do A-B testing or give different VMs to different users. We can export the VM as a package to be unloaded onto other NAS systems and we can share a link to this VM for other users. We can delete the VM, which we're obviously not going to do. And of course, we can configure a number of the settings such as the amount of storage space and the disks inside USB ports and PCIe ports for things like graphics cards if we so choose on the fly but of course it has to be powered down in between and we can revert to one of those restored images or snapshots if we so choose but without further ado let's boot our virtual machine now while we're running the virtual machine it's worth highlighting two things one there will be a tiny window here that we can see a small copy of our virtual machine or we can click this button here and it will open a brand new tab to allow us to access and see our virtual machine on the network. I'm running OBS right now and OBS will affect the CPU and GPU utilization during this video. So things may seem a little choppy, but they won't be that way for you. Other ways to access a VM and see a VM other than accessing it via the web browser, as you're seeing here, is to utilize things like remote desktop. They'll allow you to enter the location IP or internet IP here on remote desktop connection and access the virtual machine Windows 10 version right here. Alternatively, there's lots of VNC tools you can use too. Here is our virtual machine setting up Windows for the very first time and setting up Windows 10 is incredibly straightforward and easy. We've used it before and Windows 10 of a Windows 10 virtual machine installation is the same as a physical alternative. It just means you're using virtual products. As we're using right now, this downloaded copy of Windows 10 from their own website, they are asking for a key, but you don't need to have that straight away as this is a trial copy. So for now you can say, I don't have a product key and it will ask you what version of Windows 10 you want to install. We want to go for Windows 10 Home, it's that straightforward. But I'm going to wrap things up now because installing Windows 10 is something I'm sure a number of you have done before, and it's very straightforward. Do remember that you are going to have to create brand new space in order to install Windows 10 for the first time and on this drive while creating a partition. But with this, given that you're using a brand new virtual space for this installation, this is going to be very straightforward and because it's virtual will be a great deal quicker than a physical installation but as i say i'm going to wrap things up now because it's that straightforward if you've got any questions about this do let me know in the comments do click like if you've enjoyed this so i know you guys uh, know what you guys like and i can create more vm videos like this and do click subscribe to see my further vm videos where i'm going to be installing different virtual machines on all of the big NAS brands and do visit the NAS compare description uh, link in the description to see a more wordy version of this installation. 
Other than that, thank you so much for watching. If you're going to buy any of the products mentioned today, do use the links in the description. And otherwise, I will see you next time.